Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be back in the house of God? Amen. We go out there, we do what we need to, we minister, we talk to people, we tell them about God, and then we need to come back and fill up again. Let's go to Psalm 62, 1 and through, 1 through 2. I love the Psalms. King David speaks so amazingly about God. He has a real relationship with God, real communication, and that's what it's about, having a real relationship with God. And it says, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Yes! He gets it! <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we come before you right now, Lord, with joy in our hearts, with victory, Lord, in our minds, Lord, because you are an awesome, amazing God that we serve, Lord. You are the one, Lord. You are our fortress, our salvation. You are our guide, Lord. You are our counsel, Lord. You are in charge of our lives, Lord. We give it all up to you, Lord. And this service is dedicated for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, come on, we can do better than that. God is going to do to us. Amen. Let us put our hands together for Jesus and bless his name this morning. He is wonderful. How many of y'all ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. Give him your all in all. Come on. Hallelujah. Let us worship. Let us sing.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you this day. God, I thank you for this moment. For this hour, I thank you for your people everywhere. God, I thank you for those that have pressed their way to get out here. I bless you for those that are in their hearts that lead you in such a way. I bless you for those songs of praise that have been sung. We give you honor and praise and glory because it all belongs to you anyway. I've got to be in this service like you already are. You were here before we got here. You're here now. And let us rest in you, live in you, and know that it is you. I step back from this place to step into you so that you cover me. So I am not seen, but you are heard. We bless you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands real big. Come on.
not fake trust, not that I'm with the crowd trust, but we're going to talk about real trust today. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, and look at the things, but you've got to be able to fit into God's plans. That's why some things aren't working today for some people because they want God to fit into their plans. Right. Well, I already have this in mind. But when you give your life to Christ, you've given it to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. You'll find out that it'll work the best for you. Go with me to Proverbs, the third chapter. I want to read before you all. Verses 1 through 6. It is a pretty familiar scripture. Thank God for technology. I don't have to write that down. I can type it. I got to keep the battery charged. That's the only thing I got to do now. Amen. Amen. Just talk about a few things. We talk about some things in way of testimony. God has just shown me some things in my life. Hopefully, He's shown you if you're here today. If you've ever gone through anything, if you've ever gone through anything that had an obstacle, anything that caused you to cry, anything that has caused your heart to ache, but you're still here today. You, you got some kind of trust. Amen. Oh, you ought to have some kind of trust in God. Amen. 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 I mean, if you've seen some things, even if you watch the news, they talked about shutting your government down. They shut it down. And I told people, I don't know why y'all concerned. I told them, I gave them the scripture that said, and the government shall be on his shoulder. Amen. Somebody called me the other day they said, you know, this is the last day. They shut it down. You know what's going to happen. I said, well, I said, you, you might know what's going to happen to you. But I got Jesus. Amen. Amen. I mean, you got Jesus. Amen. I mean, I'm talking about really got him, really having it. Amen. To the point that you're not worried, even Amen. if they lay you off. Because I got some, I had a friend that was laid off. He made six figures. And he was laid off. <laughs> straight, straight. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. He went in, they said, go home. He wasn't getting paid. Lying on that. I mean, and he had quite a few things, but he was relying on that paycheck. He told me, he said, you know what? Since I've been around you, I've learned to trust God. Amen. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Somebody wrote a song that said, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through everything I've gone through, I had to trust him. I had to trust somebody. But they shut your government down, and that, that scripture is still pertinent, still strong. And the government. And the key thing about that is that she'll be on, up on his shoulder. I know we say his shoulders like he's carrying like this. No, he's going to set the government right up on one shoulder. Amen. And they said this when he was a baby. Huh? That's right. When he was a baby. This wasn't when he was grown. They said this when he was a baby. When he was baby Jesus. Amen. So you should know if you got Jesus, it's all good. Somebody shout, it's all good. It's all good. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 6. Uh, put your hand on your heart. I would ask you to stand. Don't respect God with our heart. Amen. Somebody want to read 1 through 6? My son. No, 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 really. Come on, let's proclaim this. My son, forget not my law, uh -huh. but let thine heart keep my commandments. Now you know why I say put your hand on your heart. Because God wants your heart first. He said, forget not my law, but let thine heart. Don't say let your mind keep them. Let your heart. In other words, God is saying, I want you to fall in love with these commandments. So if he wants you to fall in love with these commandments, they must not be hard to do. It must be a good thing. Somebody shout good thing. Good thing. Okay, keep reading. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Promise. Promise. Anybody see the promise? <laughs> That's the mother raised her hand and said hallelujah. That's a promise. You know why? That's going to be added to you? Because if you keep them in your heart, you won't stress. You won't fall out. You won't throw a tantrum on the floor. You won't do any of those things. You will love his command. He said, if you keep these, this is what's going to be added. Is, am I reading the same Bible y'all reading? Amen. For length of days and long life. Length of days and long life. Not short life. And it says, and peace shall be added. Shall they add to thee? Keep on. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. I already got that. I got enough for mercy and truth. I got all of them. So don't let that forsake you. Keep on. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. It goes the heart again. Put it around your neck. Call it jubilee. Let's call it jubilee. Put it 
you around your neck, bind them about your neck. Almost, you know, it's a choker. So when you remind yourself, you touch it a little bit. You ever wore a choker? The chokers, they, 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 they just fit. They just fit. They're beautiful. And sometimes they're irritating, but they just fit. And you like the color, they're beautiful. He said, bind it around your neck. Right. Amen. Keep reading. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. How many want some favor? Just raise your hand. Hallelujah. How many want the favor of Woo! God? Hallelujah. If you want the favor of God, just say, Woo! Woo! Man, there's a whole lot of folks want some favor. Favor is better. Do you know favor is better than you having money and jewels? Favor is so good that you can walk down the street. He says of God and man. He didn't say you'll have the favor of just me. He said you'll have the favor of God and man. And he didn't say what kind of man. He didn't say he had to be saved. He said you'll have the favor of God and man. You can walk down the street in need of something, but your heart is just, just so much with God and you have him so much in your heart and all these commandments in there. See, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this. And I've had this happen. I don't know why I'm doing this, brother. The Lord told me to bless you. And I'm blessing you because I'm, it's just something in my heart that he just told me to bless you. I've had that happen to me all, so many times I can't even count. Keep reading, baby. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Just some of your heart. No, all thy heart. Just handle the things that you can handle, and then let God handle the things that you want God to handle. All thy heart. No, God, I got this part because, you know, I, I, I got some other things, and I want to do this, and he, 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 he or she ain't really into you, God, so let me let me do this part, and then, God, I just need you to handle 90% of it, and I can do the other 10%. All thy heart. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Everybody shout all. All. Keep reading. And lean not unto thy own understanding. That means the but, 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 you don't understand. But, 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 you haven't been here before. The but, 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 that's the thing that you sit on. Okay? That's the thing that you sit on. I had a friend call me the other day, struggling, stressed out about a situation. Called me, struggling, stressed out. And I said, why did you call me? Because you're a man of God and I need to hear a word of encouragement. Okay, I'm a man of God. I'm going to encourage you right now. Stop stressing. Do you know Jesus? Do you have God in your heart? Do you have the love of God in your heart? Do you have the word in your heart? Is it written in your heart? Have you trusted him today on this situation? Well, I haven't had time to pray because I called you. Okay, hang up the phone and pray and then call me back. Oh. Huh? <laughs> says trust in the Lord. It don't say trust in Pastor Isaac. It don't say trust in Mother Victoria. It don't say trust in Pastor Dawson. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Amen. And Amen. lean not to your own understanding. In other words, the things that you cannot do, Stop stressing and trust God. Amen. I'll clap your hands for that. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead. The things that you cannot do that you can't see coming your way, the things that you can't seem to connect, to plug in, to make work, it's not for you to make work. It's for God to make for you. Amen? Amen. Keep reading. In all my ways, acknowledge him. Just some of your ways. In all, all my ways. ways. You know, uh, well, God, I still like to do this. And I know you don't like this. No, you acknowledge him. And I tell people this. People always ask me, how is it that I can live saved? It's hard to live saved, Pastor Dawson. I want to be saved, but it's just hard. I want to give my life to Christ, but I'm not ready. It's just hard. The Bible says the way of the sinner is hard. Yeah. If you want to stay in sin, if you still got some fleshy things that you want to do, that's hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. But when you love God and it's in all your heart, your heart belongs to him. When you fall in love with somebody, You'll do anything for that person. Amen. You ask the woman that will stay with a man because he beats her and say, oh, it's going to be all right. I love him. Why don't you leave him, girl? Because I love him. You ask the man that stays with a woman and she run around town and cheating and sleeping here because he, I love her. Because it's in his heart. It's not in his mind. That's where we go wrong in relationships sometimes. We give our heart to the wrong people. Uh oh I'm sorry, that one just cut the rest of my hair. I had a little bit left on my head. It just, it just cut the rest of my hair. I felt the stubble fall off. Amen? Amen. But in all the heart, keep reading. In all my ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. That's in his way. He's going to direct your path. He knows you got plans. But when you jump into his vehicle, when you jump into his wheel, when you trust into his way, he's got this. Amen? Amen. Look at somebody and say, he's got this. He's got this. Look, I'm talking about Jesus. Tell him I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. He's got this. Is that it? Amen. What you say? Yes. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 
Now, Paul wants to really. You can read scripture. The word doesn't, doesn't preach it by itself. Amen? Amen. I'm really almost through. But we're talking about real trust. I've got a few steps, and we, we covered some of this in Bible study a long time ago. What are the steps in trust? What are the steps? Just think about it. What are the steps in you trusting somebody? What are the steps that you go by that, that enables you to say, okay, I can believe in this. I can believe in that. When I come into a room, one thing I do in the room, if I come into your house and you say, have a seat, and if I look and I'm standing and I look at your chairs, I say, well, you know, I'll just, I'll just stand. I'm not going to be here long. That means I don't trust the seat that you have in your house. I'm being real. I'm being real because I'm not, I'm not the smallest fry in the pot. Amen. So I don't care who made it. I don't care if it's four legs on it. If I see certain legs, because I used to work in a furniture store. So I know which legs are flimsy, which legs can handle me. See, uh, Woody back there laughing at me. I don't know which, I know which, leg, which legs can handle me. I know that I've sat in some stuff and they said, creak, 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 and I'm like, oh, oh, oh we going down. <laughs> I know what can hold me. I do. I know what can hold me. So if I come over and you, you invite me there, I, I'm going to look to make sure it's sturdy. It can have the wild, the spon boniest legs, but I can, I, I, if I know how it's built, I know it can hold me. We come in here from, from Sunday to Sunday, Wednesday to Wednesday, Monday to Monday, and Thursdays when they come, and we trust in these things. Nobody even thought about the chair when you sat in it, did you? You just sat down because it was made, it was sturdy, it held you last week, and you just know. But me, I just can't sit just anywhere. I have to have something that helps prop me so I'll be able to get up, you know, just in case something go down. I can get up, amen? Amen. Y'all laughing. I hope y'all don't ever get this beautiful. I hope y'all don't ever get this right here. But you, you, I, if I go there, I have to be able to trust. So I've done the research. So the first thing is you have to learn. Right. You have to learn. You can't just go in and say, you know, I just trust this. And we're talking about a lot of things. We're talking about everything, a relationship with God, even a relationship in your natural life, a relationship with somebody. You can't just go into it and just throw your, throw your, throw your, uh, whole, uh, your whole area at it. You just can't throw your whole self at it. You have to be able to learn. You have to get some kind of information. So the first thing is we have to learn. We have to learn his way. We have to learn his word. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. That's right. Rightly divide the word of truth. A workman need, about, need not be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. You have to study to show yourself approved unto God. In other words, the only way you're going to understand and be able to trust God is you have to study. A lot of people just want to pray. But the Bible says, man cannot, that's right, preacher, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word. Somebody say every. Every. You want to trust God in every situation? You want to be able to stand firm without saying, but y'all don't understand. But I'm going through this, and it's still here. I have prayed. Well, you've prayed, but you haven't read the word. You've prayed, you haven't studied the word. You prayed, but you haven't, because the word tells you what to do in those situations. In the word of God, it tells you when you're going through things, if you want to beat things, if you want to defeat things, of the world it tells you well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, spiritual wickedness in all places. It also tells us that the word of God is a strong tower. Yes, yes. It also tells us, like in the word here, trust in the Lord, not out of the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Somebody shout in. Yes. So you have to learn. If we don't learn, you'll never trust God. If we don't trust, if we don't ever learn God, we don't ever take the time. You can take 10 minutes out of your 24-hour day. You can chop that 10 minutes up into that eight-hour day that you work two hours on two hours, two, I mean two minutes of break every hour. And you can get your you can get your learning in right there. Ten minutes every day will pull you so close to God it'll blow your mind. Just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes every day. Every day. And I want you to try that. 10 minutes every day will pull you so close to God it'll connect you like never before. You'll be like, wow, I wasn't even worried about that. If you just give God just, just something from your heart. Amen? Amen. The second one is you have to obey. When you read the word of God, when you say I give my life to God, when you say I'm giving my heart to Jesus, you have to obey. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. In my house when I grew up, if we didn't obey, we were called hard-headed, we were called dysfunctional children, we were called some other things, and we got whooped with belts, extension cords, and whatever. Amen? Amen. How many of you have been in that whatever whooping? 
How many of you have got, got whipped by a racetrack, by the Hot Wheels racetrack? Anybody got the racetrack? <laughs> if the authorities are watching this video, when we put it on, my mother still lives in the same place you go. <laughs> I got the Hot Wheel track whooping. Playing with my Hot Wheel, car going, go get me a belt. Oh, you can't find one? Snap right off the track. I got, and I remember it was orange. The track was orange. It was on. After that first Christmas, I didn't want no more to do with Hot Wheels. <laughs> All of a sudden, every piece of that track started to disappear. But if you didn't obey, after you learned, after you were given instruction, you didn't obey, you got dealt with. Amen? Amen. That's the problem with today. We don't want to obey God's word. And then we say, why? And I'm talking about we. If this is affecting you, just say, have mercy, God, I thank you. As if it's affecting you. But here, I'm talking about myself. If we learn to obey God, if we learn God, then we learn to obey Him. Because the Bible even says obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Anything that you think you're going to lose, anything that you think you have to give up, your obedience is better when you obey God. Because He's made us. The third one is focus. Focus on God. Focus. So you got to learn obedience and you got to focus. You got to learn to focus on God. Focus is so important that it kept Peter walking on water. That's how important focus is. In the middle of a storm, and it wasn't just a boat on the sea. It wasn't just a ship sitting in the water. There was a storm, a, a tsunami of proportions because they thought they were going to die. Tossing and turning. Here comes Jesus. Now, how do you see Jesus in the middle of all that storm? Everything is flying and flipping and flopping all over the place. And they see, if you read the scripture, it tells you, they saw it. it looks like Jesus. To the point, then they said, if that's you, one of the disciples, how many of the disciples of Christ, how many love Christ that you're following? Right? Oh, yeah. This is what Peter did. When he saw the storm, when they were in the storm, he asked, so it don't hurt to ask for Christ. Is that you? Are you here with me? Focus. Ask the question, are you in the storm with me, God? I know you didn't leave me out here by myself. And he'll ask you, if you still breathe, you still got air going through your, through your body, blood through your veins, he's there with you. Amen? Amen. Because the Bible says that man was formed by the dust, but didn't become a living soul until God breathed into his nostrils. So if you're still breathing, he's there. Somebody shout, he's there. He's there. Oh, God says that he's right here. He's right here. He's in every situation, every circumstance, Every storm. Focus is very important because the Bible said whatever Peter looked at took control of him. When he looked at Jesus, that's what took control. He was on the water. But when he looked at the wind, that's what took control. And he saw. Focus. Stop focusing on things that come into your life. You want to really trust God? And I hope that you are empowered after we leave him. But like I said, I'm almost through. Focus on him. Focus on his way for you. Focus on his plan for you. It may be some things that you want to do. It may be some things that you want to be. Amen. But when you're in Christ and you want to be a follower of Christ, you want to be who he wants you to be. Amen? Amen. You want to be who, this is why sometimes people get twisted up in their lifestyles. Because they want to be themselves. Well, I want to do this and this is how I feel. And this works for me. No, see what works for you in Christ. Amen? Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus right there. Come on. focus, and you have to have the knowledge of Christ. That way, once you have these three, you begin to get to the knowledge of Christ. The Word of God tells us for lack of knowledge, people do what? They perish. Lack of knowledge, people perish. You can't even travel to a city unless you turn on your GPS. And then if they build some new construction, it'll take you everywhere. I went to Dallas not too long ago and got on one of those spaghetti things and GPS said, go here, go here. And the next thing I know, I was headed to the water. I said, what in the world is going on? That's why I don't like them cowboys now. I'm sorry. They play the Eagles there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you have to learn to have some knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, you don't have anything. If you don't know, you can't even te take a test if you don't have knowledge. And how do you pass a test? You have to study. You have to learn. You have to obey the rules of that. You have to focus. And the last one is you have to have patience. Oh, Amen. <laughs> somebody that would hit them. So they're going to have to hit somebody. You have to have patience. You have to. If
It is a must. Patience is a builder. It is a structurer. It keeps you up. It keeps you calm. They have these new signs now. Somebody had a sign that said, be calm. I'm a basketball player. Or be calm. I'm, I'm a singer. Be calm. I'm a preacher. Be calm. I'm a dancer. Don't stress. I mean, I like those little signs. But it's talking about patience. You have to have patience. If you're going to live these things, you have to have patience. And if you're going to have patience, your patience has to be in Jesus. Can't, it, can't, it can't be in you. And let me tell you something. Be careful when you pray for a patient spirit. Lord, give me a patient spirit so I can do my condition. The thing about God is when he gives it, he gives it 100%. Everybody talking about I'm keeping it 100 No, Christ keeps it 100 If Christ gives it to you, if God gives it to you, he gives it to you 100%. Christ doesn't do anything halfway. And here's the thing. Here's the key to patience and to living in Christ and doing the will of God and being the way you can trust God. If you're asking for something and Christ knows that you're not ready, you're not going to get it from him. Amen? Amen. You're not going to get it from him. I know people say, no, no, he'll give you anything. The Bible says, you ask what you will and it shall be done. Huh. You, did you catch the word will? When somebody writes a will, they write it and it's etched in stone. A will stands so that if you perish, whatever it says in that will is done. So when you're talking about will, if you're not ready for it, Christ is not going to deliver it to you. But if you ask for it and you have that in your heart, he's going to give it to you and he's going to build your endurance. Quick story, and I, I don't like, I, I don't want people to think that I'm bragging on myself. We were talking before service about the training of John John. If you knew what people were saying when I went up there and the trainers and the coaches, they were amazed at what he went through and they were asking, what did he go through? And the process of different things that they went through. People are asking me and offering me big money to train their kids like I trained him when he was young. Like I brought him up training. Can you teach him the same drills that, that your son would do? And I have, I have a hard tell him. I got criticized when he was a little kid, training this kid. I got criticized giving him instruction of what to do if you want to play this game. I always told him, if you want passion in this game, I tell all my kids, if you really want to do this, this is what you're going to have to do. And then you're going to have to do extra. It takes patience. Patience. And even at the level he's at now, it's taking more patience. He'd been through a boot camp. He'd been through another camp. They took him off to somewhere place in the woods this past week that he didn't even know where he was. And he took them there so they would appreciate what they're given from the college because they're going to get all this basketball gear, $300 basketball shoes, six pair of them, something like that, all kind of uniforms. They're going to get this stuff. But the coach said, I want you guys to, bring, to appreciate it. They didn't even get to get on fall break to go home to visit family for the week like other colleges did because the coach wanted to teach them, I want you to be appreciative to what you do. And when I talked to him, all he could tell me is, I'm blessed to be here, Dad. Patience. Amen. The Bible says patience must have what? Her perfect turn, her perfect work. Patience must have a perfect work in your life. You cannot live for Christ. You'll never trust Christ if you don't have all of these characteristics. In my closing, once you have all of these, you'll see the resume of God. And the resume of God is you didn't make yourself. He did. Whatever else is on this resume is that you didn't put the blood in your body that you're living with now. You didn't put the veins in you. You did not stretch your bones from the time that you were a day old to the time you are now. You did not stretch your bones to fit your body now. It was God. And it still is God. And it'll be forever, God. Clap your hands for Jesus right now. Yes, hallelujah. There was a blind man who trusted God from birth. He didn't have no other way. He trusted God from birth. I think he was 38 years old when he gained his sight. He trusted God enough. He trusted Jesus enough. You can go ahead. He trusted Jesus enough. Said Jesus spat on the ground. He spat on the ground and took his spit and the dirt mixed together, mud, and put it on this blind man's eyes. And I've said this before, that's in trust. Because if you're going through something, I say, Well, come up here, let me spit on the ground and wipe it. 
<laughs> it ain't gonna work for you, am I right? Like, uh, brother, I know you with God, and I know you're a daughter, but, uh... <laughs> but he spat on the ground. That's trust. That is trust. And that tells you somewhere he's hidden it in his heart. And you know the outcome of the story. The Bible said that he was able to see. But before he was able to see the doubters, the people that hung with Jesus, even the disciples said, who said Was it him or his parents? Who said Because he's blind, God. If, if he wasn't in sin, he wouldn't be blind. Some things in your life come across so that the glory of God can be shown in your life. Some situations that you're dealing with, it's not because you've done anything bad. God wants to reveal his glory. Amen? Amen. Ask Jesus. Every Sunday, I can tell you, he was put on the cross. All he came to do was save, heal, and forgive. He didn't do nothing else. He even asked God to forgive folks that didn't know what they were doing. He even he even asked God. He said, "Forgive them, for they not know, they know they know not they know not what they do. Forgive them, but I'm gonna do this. It worked. Trust me. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. When you trust God." Whoever, if you want to just say, you know what? 
I need some more refreshment in you. I need some more excitement in you. It's up to you. It's up to you. We went to the fair. My children were blessed. Being the ride. They rode so much, they, 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 they had extra tickets. They rode so much, they, they just rode, rode, rode. I just sat out there. They tried to get on everything that excited them the most. And they were blessed to have the tickets to do that. You're blessed to have the word of God to stay excited about Jesus. Your strongest moment is nothing to God. It's nothing. Your strongest moment, your strongest battle is nothing to God. It might be tough for you, but if you release it, guess what? It ain't tough no more. Because you've given it to the master. If you want to trust him just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I ain't talking about a lot of it. I'm talking about a little bit more. You just want to put that in him. Today is your day. Today is your day. Why wait for tomorrow? Well, when I'm by myself, I, I just pray when I get home and nobody's around. You got a good support of cash right here. But it's human in the strength. Now, I don't, I don't know if that's really in the Bible, but it's a great saying. It's kind of in there where he says, Go magnify the Lord with me. And it's exalted to make you. But if you're unified, you got people up here. And I know you didn't know when you came here that these were going to come up here. These to trust strength to. But I'll tell you something, I'm up here with you. I don't just preach this because, oh, I've studied it. Mastered this lesson, and, and now I'm just going to preach it and see who comes up here. Every day I do this with my life. Every day. Because it's a relationship. I make sure I go to Christ every day, every second out here, every minute, because I love Him. I love Him. And if you do anything about being in love, real love, you stay your neck. Where you going? My kids love me so much, Daddy, where you going? I say I'm 51, I can go where I want to. They ask me all the time, Daddy, can I go? And my babies know. I go to network, they can hop in the car with me, even if I'm going to work. They're home like, Daddy, can I go? Come on. They hop in there in a minute. And they see me connected with Christ on a daily basis. They don't just hear me up here on Sunday. They don't just see this on Sunday. On a daily basis, when we jump in that car, what do we do, baby? Right? They even race to pray. They get mad. You see how they're trying to rush to give Mother Victoria's life? They do stuff like that at home. They race to pray. They get mad. And they prayed last time. Oh, wow. Really? Y'all gonna fight over prayer? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The broken pieces, the healed pieces, the shattered pieces. Woo! Yes! Pieces, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't try to figure it out. God said, once you trusted me with it, I got this. How many want God to have this, that this in your life? Raise your hand. You want God to have the this in your life, the this that's driving you crazy, the this that's making you even contemplate suicide and nobody even knows it. See, I know the spirit of suicide. I'm gifted to know it. I know it. I know it when I, when I feel it, when I see it. I know it. And I come against it. Because I'm tired of seeing people happy during the course of the day. Then all of a sudden you hear they kill themselves. I'm tired of it. And I'm a pastor that acts on I'm tired of seeing the spirit of I'm giving up. Oh, how you doing? How you doing, Brother Dawson? How you doing, Dee How you doing, Pastor? And I know you're dying inside. I know you're hurt. I tell the people in my home. When I ask you what's wrong, I mean God has given me an inkling in my spirit that something's going on. Don't tell me nothing. Don't care what it is. Don't tell me nothing. Today, this day, since you chose to trust, it's a done deal. Today, this day, anybody else want to come before we start praying? Anybody else? Because today we're placing God by your act of faith 
It's your step of coming up here. And this is not to put you in. I know some people don't like this part. They say, well, I don't like standing in front of people. But remember where it says, if you're not ashamed of me, I won't be ashamed. Sometimes you're not coming for you anyway. Amen. Huh? Sometimes when you come, somebody says, wow, they did dealing with it too. I, I'm never ashamed. If I got an ordeal, I'm going. If, if you go to the grocery store if you need food, don't you? Yeah. Or do you just go out, your house, go out to your yard and just dig up some grass and start eating? Huh? <laughs> huh? Amen. You go if you need it, amen? So why not come to Jesus? Amen. Woo! Why not come to Jesus? <laughs> Today, we're going to trust him like never before. And this won't be the last day that you do. Today you're going to stand firm with him and take this. And remember, even in your storm, just trust in him. Focus. Just remember that. Join hands right here. And I want you to lift them up. You all right to pray?
The will of God is bigger than that. It's, it's larger than that. That's what it means by stay in his will. You don't want to get out and say, well, you know what? And you know what you're going to do? You're going to say, I'm not going to do anything to frustrate Didi because I'm in his will. He got 64 billion. <laughs> you know you're going to say it. You're going to, you're going to say it. He got 64 billion. You know? I'm praying and I'm fasting that I live long. I'm praying and fasting that I live and, and, and he die off so I can get it. I'm just being real. But you're going to stay. You're going to do everything to stay in that will. You're not going to try to get out of that will. Every time I see you, you're going to be on your best behavior. Guess what? He sees all the time. So we ought to be on our best behavior. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands to Jesus. Amen. receive our offering. Uh, give with your families. Amen. Our God's an offering. Give with your families. So if you want to come up here and join with us, pray over what God has given you. Amen. You can place it in the basket and do one general prayer. Amen. But this is uh, a time to, we can't give up for what God has done for us. Amen. If you don't have anything to give, don't worry about it. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. If you're not cheerful in giving, please keep
get back with y'all on that, amen? But we are uh, preparing for that, amen? Amen. All right, I'm done with the announcements anymore. Uh, those that missed my birthday, is here. <laughs> let us stand. Let us stand. In the name of Jesus, let us stand. Happy birthday, Tom. He was born. You about so many? You about two, three months old right now. Go across the aisle, tell somebody that you don't know, tell them that God loves you, you love them too, amen.